Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm excited to show you my radio control of the Hotshot Junior. Here I have a new inbox Hotshot from Tamiya, and we're going to convert this car to radio control using my bespoke 3D printed chassis. This is the main part here, which is 3D printed, and here are some of the other 3D printed parts, which are the covers. I'm also using a reinforcement part here, which is this piece of carbon fiber bottom plate which is really cool it's optional so you don't need it if you're just using the 3d printed chassis all right here's a close-up of the 3d printed chassis if you notice i've already inserted the ball bearings there are 12 of them so it's fully ball raised these ball bearings are for the standard mini for the beauty cars all right let's get cracking with the build now get a standard wheel shaft like this one and cut it to 3.15 in length for the rear shafts and cut it to 2.45 in length for the front shafts. Now that we have cut out the shafts that we need for the four wheels, let's take a look at the other hardware we need for this project. Here I'm using the beaver gears and the brown gears, which are commonly found in the 4WD kit. This is the brown gear and this orange beaver gear is the same as the pink one here. For the propeller shaft, I'm using 2mm diameter by 75mm long metal shafts which I got from Aliexpress and for the ends I'm going to attach the brass pinion here and the plastic pinion now these metal shafts that we got from Aliexpress have the correct length which is great however the outer diameter is exactly 2mm and due to the tight tolerance they are not going to fit into these bearings so we need to sand the surface of the shaft using sandpaper to make sure that they could go into the bearing Now in this shot you can see I have put in the bearing, the brown gear and the brass pinion on one end of this propeller shaft. For this plastic pinion, we could only attach it once this shaft is in the chassis. To put this into the chassis, this is how it should be done. We'll put one end here into the cavity and then we will carefully slide this bearing into the recession from here into the recession and in doing so we could then slide the shaft through this bearing and once the end is past the bearing we could put on the plastic pinion here I'm going to do this off camera because it's hard to film everything alright here's the assembly for one of the four wheels notice I have added two washers between the outer bearing and the beaver gear this is to reduce excessive free play and after the inner bearing, I have this tubing. This is a standard 2mm inner diameter nylon tube. And this will add us an efficient end stop to prevent the shaft from sliding out. Let me show you the completed right side of the chassis with the hardware installed. Yep, it's turning freely. And as you can see, the drive transmission is working fine all right now i have everything installed into the car and the gears meshing is just perfect it's really smooth but then i realized a problem when i turn the rear wheel the front wheel is turning in the wrong direction so basically the forces are opposing each other well this is a serious problem I made a silly mistake for the beaver gears they are supposed to be at alternate sides of the prop shaft alright here's the new chassis finally after a few hours of work I got it correct I hope notice there's a recession here for the beaver gear to sit in alright let me transfer everything to the new chassis and then show you how it looks like this is how the car looks like now after transferring the hardware from the old chassis to the new chassis. Besides cutting a cavity here for the pink gear, I also need to shift this hole for mounting the cover to the side. As you can see here, the hole is nearer to the edge. Alright, let me show you the close-up of the completed chassis with the hardware installed. Now the wheels are turning together in unison. 
in the same direction. So here's the close-up of the carbon fiber base plate. It's mounted to the 3D printed chassis via six screws. Here you can see I've used bolts and nuts. And likewise here, you can see there's a nut in there. The next step is to repair the electronics. We're going to use the models, the brush models. And then we also need to use the mixer. This is the mixer for the differential drive. And here I've already soldered the receiver, which is the DSM2 receiver, to the mixer ESC. So this is the twin speed controller with a mixer inside for the differential speed to control the steering. And basically these are the output wires for the two models. I'm going to post a wiring diagram to show you which wire goes to which lead of the model. Well, with reference to the wiring diagram, here I have soldered the wires to the models. Notice the heat string here and here. This is to prevent short of the opposite terminus side by side. Well, to secure the motors to the chassis, I'm using these 0.6mm magnet wires. As you can see, this is taken out from a worn-out transformer, but you can find this easily on AliExpress or any online shop. Here's the knot of the magnet wires tied together, and here's the bottom view of it. Now we can put on the rear cover and the front covers. And then I'm going to grab some 3M double-sided foam tape to stick on the mixer ESC on top, like so. And likewise for the receiver. Now this rear stay comes with the Super 2 chassis of my big wig. I'm going to use this as the bumper for this car. To do that, I have to cut away this unmounted portion. Ta-da! Here's the front bumper installed and it looks great. I'm using some nylon spacers just to bring more depth to the bumper so that it looks thicker. Alright, for the electronics, you can see that there's something interesting here. This is not there before. This is the 4.2 volts to 5 volts booster. So it turns out that the receiver that I'm using could not be powered by the mixer ESC. If you're going to use the 5 volts output from the mixer ESC, you need to supply 2S LiPo or 7.4 volts minimum. But here I'm supplying only 1S. There are two plugs but they are running in parallel. So the input is still 1S which is 4.2 volts. As such my receiver could not power up and I need a booster to step up the 4.2 volts to 5 volts to power the receiver. Now that everything is done, let's put on the body shell. This is the hot shot body shell. Notice I've painted the shocks in front and the rear shocks. So it's looking great. Let's put it on. It's a snug fit as you can see. There you go. Wow, I'm loving this car. Alright, here I present to you the RC hotshot with differential drive for steering. As you can see, there's no steering mechanism. The two front wheels will always remain straight. And the car steers by differential. That's by varying the speeds of the two wheels here and the two wheels here. So it drives like a tank. 
Right, enough rumbling, let's take this out for the spin outside. 